What's going on YouTube? It's Mike here. Today guys in this video, I'm going to be giving my full overview of iOS 8. So just yesterday, June 2nd, 2014, Apple introduced the beta stages of iOS 8. And this is actually the first beta that I'm running here on my iPhone 5S at WWDC 2014, their worldwide developers conference that happens every year. This was their new iOS that they unleashed. They also unleashed a new version of uh, OS X and I will leave a link in the description so you can actually watch my recap of the entire event. But in this video, I wanna focus on the new features of iOS 8. Unfortunately, there wasn't as much as a lot of people thought this year. Of course, that is because of iOS 7's drastic UI changes last year. As you could tell, the home screen is actually exactly the same from what iOS 7 looked like, except for a different default background, but the icons remain unchanged. There are some new apps here and there and stuff like that, But and there's a ton of new features as well. I'm going to cover some of the best today in this video, so let's begin. And of course, remember, this is in beta stages, so not every single feature is fully available and working yet. There are a lot of glitches here and there that I've also been experiencing myself, so it's just not 100% yet, and I'm sure with the iPhone 6, Apple's going to add a couple more features that'll make iOS 8 perfect. So the first new feature was actually within Photos. Now, I don't have this fully set up yet as I'm still working on upgrading my Mac to the latest version in order for all this to work because continuity between all the iOS devices and Mac computers as well is very, very strong in iOS and OS X. But basically, it's within Photos. And the, the, the gist of it is that you can actually sync your photos between all of your devices. So if I take three pictures on my iPhone here, I can sync them right up to my iPad or my Mac and I can have them all there. And they're actually, Apple's actually working on a photo client for Mac because it does pretty much the exact same thing and it syncs all of your photos. Now that's not supposed to come out until early 2015, although they are bringing the next version of OS X public this fall. They're still waiting on their photo client. So it's a little bit buggy right now. I can't really demonstrate it for you, but that's pretty much what it is. All of your photos are in one place on all of your devices. It's, it's really cool. Aside from photos, messaging got a huge update. When I say huge, I mean huge. So we'll go ahead into messages here. So you can see I'm in a little group chat here and group chats got major updates with iOS 8. It's actually insane. So I can go to the details of the group chat right here and you can see my two friends are right here, Albert Prigodich and Tanner Meekum. So I can actually remove these people from the group chat if I wanted to. I can add more people to the chat and if they have iOS 8, I can send my current location and I could also share my current location if I wanted. I can even name the group chat itself. So for example, right here, I will name it. I could also say do not disturb for this conversation, which also works for individual conversations with just one person, which is great. And I can even leave this conversation. So it, it's pretty cool overall. And as soon as all of your friends and family members get iOS 8, you'll see the integration work a lot more. Everyone, as you can see there, I made the change and it says you name the conversation friends. Well, if everyone has iOS 8, they see that I did that and it takes effect. The conversation becomes friends for all of them. So it's pretty cool. And there are a lot of other new features too. For example, I could start a simple voice recording here just like this. Watch this. Hey guys, I'm doing a video for iOS 8. What do you think? And I can just send it like that and automatically they hear it and I can actually play it back to hear it. Hey guys, I'm doing a video for iOS 8. What do you think? And I can choose to keep that message or I can have it expire in two minutes, which is what it would regularly do. So I'm just going to click keep here so they always have access to it if they want. And another cool thing is there is now selfie-ing, if that makes any sense to you. There's now quick selfies. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to hold down the camera button. And as you can see, a little camera diode pops up and I could switch to the front camera and instantly take a picture really quick. You can see my camera right here. I'll just take a quick selfie. I don't know how to do this. Okay, and you can see just like that it sends. It doesn't even stop me. It just sends it right away to my friends. It's very, very quick, which is what I love about um, the new message update in iOS 8. So as you can see here, there's also a quick reply, and I could simply drop down now, and I could say, hello, just like that, and quickly reply. And I actually never have to wind up going to the Messages app. And you can do that right from Notification Center as well. Another new feature is actually within multitasking. If I go here and double tap the home button, you're used to seeing the regular actual multitasking bar. But now you can see here on the top, I have this little recents bar. And I can actually access the most recent people that I've contacted with. So let's say, for example, I want to contact my friend Tommy. I could call his home, his iPhone, message him, FaceTime him, or FaceTime audio him. And I could pretty much do that for everyone. And it even displays your favorites if you go all the way 
way to the side and it, it's, it's pretty simple it's kind of like a quick thing so you guys probably saw before there is a brand new keyboard or sort of advanced keyboard I should say in iOS 8 and pretty much what that is is it includes predictive typing so it predicts what I want to say at the beginning of a sentence when I'm actually typing a sentence the words that I'm typing and of course at the end and if someone makes a reply it it recommends what I should probably say like if it asks a question if it says do you want to go to the movies it'll say yes no I don't know it'll come up in these three little buttons here and it actually learns to know you so in messages if you're not so formal maybe you're casual with your friends you don't spell things correctly it understands that but when you go into something like mail it understands your sense of professionalism and businessy type of way if you know what I mean another new feature is family sharing and basically the way that this works is it actually allows you to kind of control and offer what you need to for your family's iOS devices. So, for example, if let's say it's a mom and dad that want to control what their kids see, what their kids access, what their kids purchase and stuff like that, that can now be done all through iCloud within devices. So another new feature announced was iCloud Drive and I actually believe Apple is still in the works on this. I'm not 100% sure if it's entirely available yet. Regardless, what the feature actually does is it syncs up between your iPhone, iPad or iPod Touch as well as your Mac and you could transfer pretty much anything back and forth so let's say you have some files from Keynote numbers uh, pages documents from Microsoft Word some music files anything really any sort of files you could just contain back and forth it doesn't have to be specific files it's pretty much anything I'm just on the iCloud settings page here there really isn't anything available for it yet as far as I know um, however it's a feature that should be coming very soon I think Apple's still working on it so as I said Apple introduced a new app or two as you can see here on my second page of icons one of the main apps that I wanted to talk about was actually health and what health does is basically you can keep track of anything diagnostics fitness lab results nutrition sleep and stuff like that I just haven't had the chance really to set it up yet but you could list your calories how much sleep you get what you're eating if you're you know going for if you need lab results if you're having something checked out the medication you're taking pretty much you could track anything you could put in your weight your age and stuff like that and just keep track it kind of gives you a digital record and you see it on the dashboard you oversee everything about your health it's like your little personal assistant if you will and like I said I just haven't had the chance to completely set it up yet however I do think it's a really cool feature and I can't wait to actually start using it and I do believe that this hints at something like the iWatch coming in September because why else would Apple all of a sudden jump into health we we're right about that I think we're gonna be right about this iWatch too I think Apple's gonna want to integrate um, an iWatch into an app like this just to you know keep it going and actually, you know, have a reason to keep track of your health with the iWatch. So one of my favorite features announced in iOS 8, and this actually involves OS X Yosemite, which is the new version of OS X, as I was talking about before, I don't know if you guys caught that, but it's basically continuity, and it's basically where everything is connected to your devices, your iPhone, your iPad, your iPod Touch, even your Mac, and this, this is probably the best uh, sort of features that they've put out. So, for example, if I'm getting a phone call from my friend on my iPhone, phone, it will appear on my iPad. It'll show that I'm getting a phone call. Let's say I'm on my Mac. If I'm getting a phone call from my friend on my iPhone, the phone call will show up on my Mac and I can actually pick up and answer the phone call from my Mac or my iPad and actually hear the phone call through the speaker and and actually talk to that person without ever having to pick up my iPhone if it's charging on some other side of the room. So I'd never miss a call ever again. It would always you know, be wherever I'd be using my devices. It's, it's really cool. This also includes SMS messages. So for example, if someone that is not an iPhone user sends me texts to my iPhone, they will now appear on my iPad and my MacBook or my iMac as well, which is really cool. And another new feature is actually a hotspot type of feature where let's say you're on your MacBook or your iPad and you need connection to the internet. Obviously, you know, you may not have cellular connection on your iPad and you certainly won't on something like your MacBook. Then you can actually use your iPhone as a Wi-Fi hotspot and using the data that you have on your iPhone, the data plan that you have, you can actually access the data on your MacBook or your iPad. And it just appears on either device as like it would say Micronin's iPhone 5S as a Wi-Fi hotspot. It's, it's something really cool that I, I never thought possible to be honest. Spotlight got a few updates. So for example, if I type in something like X-Men, it will show movie theaters it's playing in, uh, the movie itself on iTunes, some web results and stuff like that, Wikipedia. I would show you this, but I just can't get it to really work for me right now. Again, you gotta keep in mind, this is beta. And then two of the things that I wanted to throw in there was Apple actually made like iOS 8 two stories. Of course, it was the new features for us regular customers and then the 
developers they gave all new APIs to that are going to be coming later this year as well. And they have APIs for things like iCloud, Touch ID, Photos, and even more. So I, basically developers can take a little bit more advantage um, into what Apple has to offer and they can use Apple's hardware and other software and services that Apple offers to actually work with their apps. If you have some secure files you want to lock up, you can use Touch ID to lock that up for you in a separate third party app. The same goes for iCloud. You can have iCloud integrated to a third party app if the developer chooses. So they opened up a ton of new APIs, which was really awesome and a big step for Apple to actually make. Now the other thing I wanted to throw in there was Apple is opening up for enterprises and stuff like that now. Basically this is a very small feature. What they're doing is with iOS 8 it will make it more like a powerful business partner versus having to, let's say you're a business and you buy 8 iPhones for 8 new employers that you have. You can actually all set them up at once in one sitting. You know, you don't have to go opening it up and setting everything up and it'll actually transfer all of the employer's previous information like mail, contacts and stuff all into those devices. Devices. It's it's a lot easier and more convenient. So that's pretty much it. That's iOS 8. I'll just throw in there. This was at the bottom of Apple's website. Which devices will be compatible? A lot of people were wondering. And it will be the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5C, and the iPhone 5S. The iPod Touch 5th generation, the iPad 2, the iPad 3 and 4, the iPad Air or iPad 5, iPad Mini, and iPad Mini with Retina Display or iPad Mini 2. So the only thing that's lost support from iOS 7 was actually the iPhone 4. So iPhone 4 users, sorry you won't be getting this update um, but anything after that will be getting this update they're even hanging on to iPhone 4s users as slow as iOS 7 was on the iPhone 4s they're hanging on so if you want guys you can actually get these betas now they are limited to registered developers of course um, but you know people are always trying to get it so I'll leave a link down in the description on a guide to the best the safest and most secure legal I guess you could say way to actually get iOS 8 beta 1 and all the future betas of iOS 8 on your device so check it out in the description below but that's pretty much it guys that is iOS 8 hopefully Apple introduces some more stuff later this year and refines iOS 8 makes it a little bit better like I said it is a little bit buggy right now I'd say it's about 70 75 percent stable out of being a hundred percent stable like the latest release which was iOS 7.1.1 so you know be careful obviously there's a lot of cool new stuff Apple's trying to work on and it takes some time so they want developers to play around with it a little bit and of course maybe some non-developers and see what they can do with it to make it even better so if you guys like this video please leave some comments below on your thoughts of course rate give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below and i'll see you guys in the next video